Hey everybody, welcome to the Conscious Marketer Podcast. This is Richard here and joined by Kylie Slavak. Hi, Kylie. Hey. And let's talk about imposter syndrome today, Kylie. It's one of these things that keeps coming up over and over for most creators, actually. Uh, there's this idea that, you know, some people are just born with self-confidence and they never doubt themselves. But what, what I've seen with a lot of people that we work with is uh, imposter syndrome is kind of always there in the background. And a lot of the creators we work with are always kind of questioning themselves. What do you think? Well, I think healers and coaches and people in the transformational industry who are by nature helping and healing and supporting other people, I find that they have more certifications and more education than anybody on the planet. Right. <laughs> except for maybe somebody with like three PhDs of which I've never met anyone. I'm sure there's people out there like that. And part of it is because they, they finish one and as they're learning, they start to realize what they don't know in other areas. And so they want to learn that. And then they go to another class and then they find out, Oh, there's all these things I don't know. And this happened to me when I was in massage school, I started to learn about all these things and I wanted to learn more about them. And then those things caused me to realize how much I didn't know and didn't know, didn't know. But the truth was, is I, I was capable of doing body work, but I thought like, I can't start until it's perfect. And I never felt like I knew enough. And the truth was that I did, but I know that a lot of people who are more empathy driven or more sensitive or more caring, they don't want to start until they feel like they're an expert because they don't, you know, they want to give that best value that they can possibly give to people. But I would say you don't have to be the highest level expert in the whole world. You get to be an expert by practicing and that's why it's called a practice. You know, even dentists, they go to medical school, they go to school for eight years and it's still called a practice, you right. know, they're not perfect. So I think a lot of times imposter syndrome does come from this seeking of perfection that is actually not even attainable. Yeah. One of our clients, uh, you know, teaches shamanism, which is kind of an interesting subject. And he would say that a real sh shaman doesn't ever call themselves a shaman. They call themselves a shamanic, sh shamanic practitioner. And when he refers to himself, he would say, I'm in my 29th year as a shamanic practitioner. And so it's always an evolving practice. And I think if we need that next degree or the next level, it's, it's okay to go for that. But I think there's this bigger realization that we actually get better by, by doing and working with others over time. That's actually probably the fastest way actually to get better is to start to serve and start to like in your body work example, the way you get better at working on bodies isn't probably in the classroom. It's probably working on like a real body for an hour and a half and another one and another and another one. And over time you learn how to get the right posture and you learn different body types uh, versus like the 10 minute situational modules, you know? <laughs> yeah, I, I really do agree with that. And I think that, I think that it, it does genuinely come from a care to serve people at the highest. But my theory is that if you're not getting out there and serving people, you're not serving them at the highest. So it is great to be a constant student of things and to constantly be learning, but we can't use the learning and that passion for growth and education as a reason to not start. And one of the things that I have people really look at when they're having this imposter syndrome and they're very good at what they do and they have a lot of gifts and talents is I just ask them to kind of contemplate or write down everything that they are good at. So maybe you're not Z, maybe you're X, but what does that look like? you know, we'll never really fully arrive. I was telling Richard earlier that I was talking to a friend of mine yesterday who is one of the top storytellers in big tech. So he's worked with Facebook and he helped them determine what belonging means for Facebook groups. So a lot of the features of Facebook groups 
you know, come from his theories on belonging. He's helping the largest venture capitalist company. He's he is basically the storyteller of the future for big tech, and he's working with all these companies to get them to be more human and more compassionate. So he's changing the world in a way that I will never even come close to. And when I heard it, I was kind of like, man, I'm not even really a brand storyteller. Like I'm not even, I'm not doing what he's doing. And Richard kind of laughed at me. He's like, whatever you're doing, what you're doing though. And so I get it too. You know, it's not like I never doubt myself or I never, I never feel like there's a higher level to attain to. But when I'm realistic with what I have accomplished, I realize that I have accomplished a lot and I do have certain talents and I do have certain skills. And so I do encourage you to look at, realistically speaking, what are you good at? And the other reason people get imposter syndrome is they feel like I need to be like a hundred years ahead of my clients. And a couple of my friends who are colleagues said a few, you know, 10 years ago or so, and I heard them say this, you only need to be a couple steps ahead of where your people are at. And I think there's some truth in that. You know, I know that we help people that are just starting out, people that are intermediate and people that are multiple million dollar companies. And so they're all at different levels. And so for some of them, you know, they've been they've been doing marketing or they've had other marketing companies. So so everyone's at a different level. But as long as you are a little bit ahead of the people you're helping, you're good and you don't need to feel like, oh, my God, I'm not qualified and I'm not this and I'm not that. And trust me when I say that I get it because I can lapse into that. But if I were to stay there, I would never be able to help you. We wouldn't be doing this podcast because I would feel like, well, what do I have to say? And then we wouldn't be helping you. We wouldn't be having this conversation right now and you wouldn't be getting any value from it. Yeah, that that kind of triggers something for me. And one of the the one of the things that's really hard to see is actually what you're naturally good at. And so what you're naturally good at really comes easy to you. In fact, it probably comes so easy to you and is so natural to you that you don't even think it's even worth teaching or even like you think you think it's going to be that easy for everybody. So, um, you know, copywriting is a good example. And for Kylie, she could probably work with a client and within like two or three minutes have a really good email or two written or have their origin story done. And it just comes natural to her because she studied it for so long, you know. Um, and another example is tech, you know, tech for some people is really easy where other people, they really need help and they, and in fact, they, they want to outsource to, to people that are experts in it. And if you're more tech minded, it might come extremely easy to you. So you, so there's all, there's a whole target audience of people who it's not their natural ability and they're going to need, they're going to need your help. Um, you know, Kylie and I have a person that we work with and we really respect. He's, we, th we think he's one of the best marketers in the world, Travis Sago. And he, I, I've heard him a post before and he says, you know, if you're, if you're kind of depressed and not feeling good about what you're doing, then you just have to ask who I'm paraphrasing, who, who are you comparing yourself to, you know? And so I think imposter syndrome is, you know, if you're comparing yourself to somebody who's 20 levels above you, but ignoring the 20 levels lower that you could already be serving, you know? And so if, uh, you know, if you have, you, if you have a million dollars in savings, you can compare yourself to the billionaire and feel like a absolute failure. You know? <laughs> but if you have a uh, million dollars in savings and you look around and realize that most people don't have a net worth more than a hundred thousand, then you're doing okay. You know? So it's all relative to, to who you're comparing yourself to. Um, so I think, I think this imposter syndrome thing keeps, keep, will keep coming back to you as you continue to evolve, because the truth is, you know, just in a comparison example, there's always going to be somebody that's a few levels ahead of you. Um, and so you just have to kind of watch yourself and realize that, um, there's, there, there is that level to expand to, but it shouldn't, here's the key. It shouldn't prevent you from stepping forward with your gifts and serving those who really need your help and who are ready to work with you. I love that. I hope you all receive some value from that and you feel like you can 
you know, tame the inner critic just even a little bit, just like dial it down, <laughs> just like dial it down a millimeter and kind of take to heart some of the stuff that we've said. And if you're not in our marketers path group, then we'd love to have you, but feel free to, if you are in that group, feel free to share some insights, some comments, ask questions. Cause for me, if this foundational piece isn't transformed, then none of the rest of the marketing is really going to work because you're not going to believe in it. And if you don't believe in it, it doesn't work. So I would love to see you really thrive and I'd love to see you win. And so, yeah, feel free to reach out about that. Yeah. And rather than have this, have that dialogue stop you, have it, have it fuel you to take action and put your offer into the market and through serving other people, you continue to take, you know, what you do to a higher level. And so that's, I think that's the, the Goldilocks point is keep becoming better, keep learning more. And, but the, a big part of that is learning by doing and serving and your game will keep evolving and growing. And then what's interesting is your level of client will keep growing and evolving too, and, or you might be able to serve even more people as you do that. And so that's a better way to move forward than having it stop you and maybe just having to stop you in your tracks, which is a really a tragedy when people hold their gifts in, it's like they have, have people they could serve, they have people they can help and they've kind of been influenced, um, by their own thinking and by what's what they see. And, and then those people that could really receive the gifts and that, and that, and you could really be impacting the world that doesn't happen if you let it stop you. So don't, don't let that happen. I don't want you to, I don't want that to, that to happen in your, in your business, in your life. <laughs> yeah, I'm in agreement there. I think the most important point to get out of today's conversation as we wrap it up is people need your help and help them go out and help them. You know, you certainly can't make things worse by helping the people you're meant to be helping. So all that imposter stuff story is just, it's just a form of self-sabotage. It's not true. And so, yeah, we, we really hope that you got something out of this conversation and that you can go out there and help more people. Thanks for joining us today. And you can get this episode on consciousmarketer.com forward slash podcast if you're listening on iTunes or Spotify or one of the other streaming platforms. And we really appreciate it if you subscribe to wherever you're listening and or leave a review. We'd love to see your reviews. We read all those reviews. Thanks for joining us here today and we'll see you next time. Thanks everyone. Bye everyone.